Hello and welcome to Dyson Demons. I'm Emma and today I'm going to show you how I paint an Acrodon for my Seraphon army. So if you've been following this channel for any length of time, you've probably noticed that there has been a quite a big break where I haven't done any videos. And it's not because I haven't wanted to, but I have been dealing with some mental health issues that meant that I simply couldn't film any videos for some time. Hopefully I, I'll get back to a much more regular uh, schedule where I'll be uploading more videos. So anyways, the Acrodon. I start off, as you can see, with the model that's been primed using a white primer. This one is White Scars from Citadel. And then I start painting it with a couple of speed paints. So the first one I'm using here is called Burnt Moss. And I think it's supposed to be like a dark very dark desaturated green color um but i think it looks more like a nice um sort of a little bit broken up a uh, gray color with just a tint of green to it which i really like and then i'm using a lighter color also from the, the army painter and this one is called battleship gray and i'm doing as you can see here just a really quick wet blend of these two colors usually for my big dinos i have a um uh, sort of a turquoise skin tone but I thought since this was a lot smaller and I didn't want it to be too similar in skin tone to the lizard that's going to be riding on top I decided that a gray skin tone here was probably the way forward. I wanted the scales on the back and sides to be a nice contrasting color to the gray skin tones and so I went with purple and pink and this one is Loxian purple one of the contrast paints from uh, Citadel and the other color I'm going to be using is Volopus Pink, which is also a contrast paint. So bear in mind when you watch this video that this is a model that I'm painting for my, um, my Seraphon army. So this is a gaming piece. So a lot of the things you see me doing here, um, you could definitely do that uh, much more smoothly and do some really nice gradients. But I'm not being too particular here because, as I said, this is a gaming piece. It's something that I'm painting to... Uh, look nice. Uh, well, I think it looks nice anyway <laughs> uh, on the tabletop uh, and it's not something that I'm painting for a display or for a painting competition or anything. Also, the same goes the other way around. If you think, okay, she's spending a whole bunch of time on a gaming piece. Do I really need to do that in order for it to be considered like decent tabletop? Absolutely not. This is my tabletop quality. This is what I liked when I put stuff on a tabletop. Um, but this is definitely not necessary. I would say you could just actually skip all the later stages and just go straight for the contrast paint and let that be the whole thing. And that would be completely awesome as well. Anything that's not a gray model looks so much cooler on a tabletop. But I will be more than happy to play with you also if you show up just with a grey army. I don't think anyone should be gatekeeping anyone else's hobby. So for the feather here on the tail, I'm first using a green contrast paint, that's the Warp Lightning. Then I'm using Yand and Yellow and then lastly Blood Angelus Red. And as with the skin and the scales, I just try to do a pretty quick wet blend. and. You don't have to do all these uh, blending the colors. You could just go for one single color and that would probably be a little bit quicker and a little bit easier. Uh, this is just something that is one of the things I really enjoy about painting. I like doing quick, colorful wet blends with contrast paints and speed paints, uh, but it's absolutely, of course, uh, nowhere near necessary. It's just... It's a matter of deciding what you want to spend your hobby time on. And for me, doing colorful uh, stuff like scales and feathers is fun. Whereas painting skin is usually not quite as much fun. So I don't devote as much time and energy to that. Then uh, for uh, the lines between the scales, I paint them using a Kilian Green, which is a sort of dark um, turquoise color, also a contrast paint. And I use that to make the scales, each individual scale, pop a little bit more than they would if I had just left it here. Again, it's completely optional and you could use other colors as well for the lines between. Uh, I also considered just painting them black, but I thought that that might look a little bit too stark perhaps. Uh, and it wasn't really necessary with completely black lines, so that's why I went with the Achillean green. I'm also using the same color here on the feather just to make um, sort of the small lines in the uh, in the fabric of the feathers uh, stand out a little bit more. Of course, the Achillean green as a turquoise color looks slightly off on um, on the yellow and the red. And I should probably have used like a, a brown color or something for that step. 
But then, yeah, I was feeling a little bit lazy and didn't want to, you know, change the paints out. So I just went with the Achillean green and it was just fine. Then for highlighting these scales, I went with a purple color and this one is called Ultraviolet and it's from Huge Miniatures. It's one of their fluorescent paints. Um, I chose that color both because I wanted to highlight the scales with a purple color and this is a nice uh, lighter uh, purple color, so that's perfect. But also because it will glow under UV light and I just think that's hilarious and fun. And so uh, whenever I have the chance to use fluorescent colors, I will. For the second layer of highlights on the purple scales, I chose a pink color and that's because, uh, well, it's for two reasons actually. One is that I find it's a little bit tricky to get a really um, light version of purple to look great. It usually just looks a little bit pastel and washed out in my opinion. Um, some people do it really well. I'm not one of those people, so I tend to highlight purple with pink whenever I can get away with it. And also because I wanted those two purple and pink colors on the scales to blend in a little bit better anyway, so it made sense for me to use a pink color there. The color I'm using is called Cyber Pink, and then uh, the next color I'm using here on the uh, pink scales is called Pulse Wave Pink, and both of them are also uh, fluorescent paints from Huge Miniatures. I tried to put most of the paint on top of the scales, just because I think it looks best. Uh, and also because I'm slightly lazy and I didn't want to paint all around the scales. So if I could do just, you know, uh, <laughs> um, three, uh, three parts of the scale instead of four, it would be a little bit quicker. And I also think it just makes a little bit of sense, like seeing as the light would probably come from above. And so that's where it would be hitting the scales anyways. Um, but it is also slightly something to do with laziness, I'm afraid. Then I highlighted the pink scales with an orange color and this orange color is called Laser Orange and it's also from Huge Miniatures. It's a very vibrant orange color, but here it just looks really pale and washed out and it has something to do with the camera. It doesn't really, it's not really able to pick up the, um, the really bright colors of the orange somehow. I don't quite know why. And then lastly, I'm highlighting it with just a touch of yellow. This is just Flash Kids Yellow from Citadel. And the reason I'm highlighting it with orange and yellow instead of just a, a lighter version of the pink is just because I wanted to give a little bit of warmth and glow to the um, pink. And just because I actually think orange on top of, uh, of pink, it's just a really nice highlight and it looks... I think it looks super fun and super cool. And sometimes it's just fun to highlight with a color that's not just a lighter version of the sort of base color. For highlighting the green parts of the feather, I'm firstly using Mood Green from Citadel, which is a nice vibrant green color. And I try to be a little bit careful here because I don't want to sort of mess up the texture of the feather. I think what makes it look good is all those very long lines. Um, and for the yellow, I'm again using the Flash Kids yellow. But if this was not a gaming piece, but something I was painting for a competition, I would spend much more time on this texture and I would also spend more time blending the colors because, you, of course, you could easily have made two or three uh, steps between the green and the yellow if you wanted it to look really smooth. Um, yeah, but I'm a little bit lazy, so I didn't really do that. Then for the parts between the uh, yellow and the red, I'm just using a little bit of orange and this one is called Orange Fire from Vallejo. And that's just because I thought the difference between the yellow and the red became just a little bit too stark for my liking. So, yeah, despite the laziness, I chose to go with a bit of orange as well. And then for the uh, red parts of the feather, I'm firstly using a color from a uh, Chimera colors called simply the red. Then for the uh, second layer of highlights here on the green, I am using again a color from Huge Miniatures and this one is called Quantum Green and it's also a fluorescent color um, and it's just one of my favorite colors. It's so easy to work with and it's, um, it's just very bright, very vibrant and uh, whenever I get the chance, I will use it in a, uh, in a color scheme. For highlighting the orange parts of the feather, again, I am using the laser orange from uh, from Huge Miniatures. Uh, and as I said, it doesn't really pick up the vibrancy here uh, on camera, but I promise you in real life, it's a really nice vibrant color that is just a lot of fun to use. Then for highlighting the uh, red, I am using Radar Red also from Huge Miniatures. And it's not actually... It's not actually a true red, which you can also probably tell here from the video. 
Um, it's slightly lighter, and I think it's just necessary for it to look like that to be for, in order for it to be fluorescent. But I think with a, a red color underneath, it does a decent job of looking like it's just a really nice bright red color. Then for highlighting uh, the last highlight here on the green, I am using a neon yellow, which is called Starfire Yellow, also from Huge Miniatures. And then for the uh, yellow parts of the feather, I'm using a little bit of a bone color. This one is a wraith bone from Citadel. And the reason for that is just I wanted the um, feather uh, where it's yellow, I wanted to have a bit of a warmer tone to it. So that's why I went with the wraith bone instead of another fluorescent color like the just uh, perhaps I could just have used the, uh, um, the starfire yellow on that as well. I used a little bit of the flash sketch yellow to highlight the orange and a bit of the orange color from uh, Huge Miniatures, the laser orange for highlighting the red. Lastly, I decided to do a little bit more with the skin. It looked slightly unfinished next to the rest of the model. And as I said, painting skin is usually not something I enjoy too much. So I tend to try to do it as quickly as I can. And that is, well, that's what happening, what's happening here as well. I just uh, mixed in a bit of white first with the burnt moss and used that to um, accentuate the sort of scaly texture on the top of the skin. Uh, and I first mixed in just a little bit of white and then I touched it up with a bit more white, as you can see here, just to make it look nice and contrasting. Um, I could definitely have spent more uh, time on this stage, but I mean, the, it was the scales and the feather and stuff that I... I really had fun painting, so this was just to make sure that it looked okay, and then I would call it uh, call it done, basically. As the very last step, I mixed in a bit of the Battleship Grey also with white, and I used that to just make some really quick sort of stripes under, underneath uh, the, the belly. Uh, just to highlight that a little bit and make that look a little bit more visually interesting without going overboard or trying to do some like really fantastic skin texture. And stuff like this is probably the reason why I don't really see myself competing in like really high-end painting competitions because I sort of tend to find some parts of the model more enjoyable to work on than others. And uh, yeah, I don't really want to spend um, 20 hours painting skin uh, when I just really prefer working on the scales and, and feathers and ornaments and stuff. Well, that's just me. Perhaps at some point I'll take it up as a, a really cool challenge. Who knows? Anyways, uh, this is what the model looks like when it's all done. And uh, I think it was, uh, was really fun to paint. And I'm very happy sort of um, with the Acrodon on its own. And I'm also fairly happy with the Lizard on its own. But I think perhaps I made a slight mistake with the colors uh, because there, I think there is too much pink going on uh, so that the rider and the uh, beast looks a little bit too samey. Um, I painted them, as you could tell, of course, uh, in sub-assembly, so I had the rider painted separately. Um, and I didn't put them all together before they were completely done. And uh, it just dawned on me that perhaps there was just a little bit too much pink going on. So I either should have changed the scales on the Acrodon or perhaps should have changed some of the colors on the rider's um, armor. I don't know. I think it looks fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I just think there's a little bit too much pink going on, which I know it sounds weird. Can you actually have too much pink going on? But I think that actually might be the case uh, with this uh, model. Hmm. Oh, well, I had fun painting it. And as you can see here, it glows under a UV light, which is just uh, incredibly useless, but also very fun. And uh, well, that's enough to make me happy anyways. Also, as I said, I've been dealing with some mental health issues. That mean that I don't, uh, I haven't been able to, to paint a lot and I haven't made any videos or anything. So just the fact that I have actually painted an entire model um, from start to finish in about a week and I've had fun doing it and I've filmed the process and I've made a video. It's just so satisfying for me and I just feel it feels like a huge accomplishment because it was really difficult this time you guys but I stuck with it and I have painted it and now I actually have a model that's painted and ready to go on the tabletop and be played in my Seraphon army 
and it just is so satisfying and I'm really, really proud of myself. Yeah. And you're probably not supposed to say that, but in this case, I actually really am. So uh, for me, this model means a lot, even though it's by no means perfect. If you want to know how I painted the uh, lizard riding the dino, I have other videos for that. I think I have two or three different iterations of uh, painting a Seraphon warrior. And uh, I'll link to that in the, uh, in the description so you can find them if you are interested in watching that as well. But before you leave, I would just like to uh, say a huge thank you to my patrons who support Dyson Demons over on Patreon. So thank you so much to Thomas Masson, Scott Broadway, Gwenna L, Queen's Wolf, Double J's Terrain, Mola Mola, Steve Eberly, Nassim Makaya, Bosworthy Rogue, Mando Project, Starcon85, S. Beer, Echinococcus, Elliot Philby, Cyber Fossil, and Cinnamon Coffee87. Thank you so much to all of you guys. If you want to join them in supporting Dice Demons, uh, I'll leave a link to the Patreon in my description as well. As always, if you have any sort of questions, comments, suggestions for future videos, I would love to hear them. So please leave a comment and I will try to get back to as many as I possibly can. Also remember that you can, of course, always follow me as Dice and Demons over on X, formerly known as Twitter, and on Instagram as well. So thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time. Bye.